Among the many projects that I'm working on, one project that I've joined in with is the Global Consciousness Project 2.0, which is a project of random numerical generators placed around the world. Ultimately, there will be a thousand of them, one of which is flashing right here in my den. And so one of the things that fascinates me about this type of technology and what it tells us is it's limitless applications. And so because of these very unique things about the GCP 2.0, I've invited Roland McCrady, who is a PhD and is the director of research at the HeartMath Institute, the head of the GCP 2.0 project, to join me on a podcast. And that podcast will be releasing sometime in the next week. In preparation for that, I'm going to read the overview to you of the GCP 2.0, which was provided. This project and the science that it is developing through the HeartMath Institute is not just revolutionary, it's evolutionary. And it represents an entirely new way to look at the interconnectedness of the human consciousness. I hope you enjoy this reading of the GCP 2.0 overview in preparation for my interview with Roland McCrady. Thank you very much and peace out everyone. The Global Consciousness Project, GCP, was created in 1997 by Dr. Roger Nelson and a group of researchers working in the boundary areas of physics and psychology. It has grown to include over 150 scientists, engineers, artists, and others around the world. Our purpose is to detect, quantify, and study subtle effects of human consciousness, modulating the physical world at a global scale. We maintain a world-spanning network of rigorously validated physical devices that produce strings of random numbers. These physical random number generators, RNG, are designed for research that shows how human consciousness can affect random systems under controlled conditions. The original hypothesis of the GCP was that the continuous parallel streams of time-synchronized data from this network would show significant deviations from the expected normal randomness during events that produced a large-scale, widely synchronized focus of attention and emotional reactions. During the first few years of the Global Consciousness Project, the number of sites hosting the RNG grew to a maximum of about 65, with locations from Alaska to Fiji on all populated continents and in nearly every time zone. As of December 2015, we have analyzed 500 formal events in order to test the general hypothesis. Each test was specified a priori, that is, before any data were examined and formally registered for public viewing on the project website. Our predictions for each test was that the data would depart from the random expectation based on a pre-specified statistical measure. We assessed a variety of events in this manner, including celebrations of New Year's, shocking events like the terrorist attacks on September 11, 2001, natural tragedies such as the great earthquakes in Turkey and Haiti, and the Asian and Japanese tsunamis, and large-scale meditations and religious events like the Kum Mele in India. The results showed strong correlation in some cases and virtually none in others. But overall, the composite across all formal tests shows clear, statistically significant evidence that something remarkable happens when many people are drawn into a community with similar interests and emotional responses. In other words, when an event evokes a synchronous emotional response in a large number of people, it creates a type of coherence in what we think of as a global field environment that interacts with and changes the output of physical devices based on random quantum tunneling processes. Post hoc analysis reveals that in some major events, such as the September 11, 2001 attacks and larger earthquakes, the data deviations begin several hours before the onset of the event, suggesting a type of pre-stimulus response along the lines of what is seen in human brain waves and other physiological measures in the non-local intuition studies. In these studies, the magnitude of the pre-stimulus response prior to the occurrence of the event is related to the magnitude of the response evoked by the actual event suggesting the information about the future is enfolded in a non-local field. The project's website has complete information about its history, technology, and methods. It includes a hypothesis registry that records specifications of all cases we have analyzed. The website also provides free public open access to the database. The result page includes a table summarizing each of the formal tests with links to detailed descriptions. 
The website provides links to published articles and reports with detail of the research findings, including multiple examples of coherent structure in the data that should have been random. A composite analysis across all the individual cases is presented in this chronological graph where the red line shows the steady accumulation of differences from the normal expected randomness in a global network. If there were no effect, the red line would have a level trend. It would wander randomly up and down, staying near the horizontal zero line. As the figure shows, the actual data have a steady upward trend. The figure also displays a distribution of control data from 500 random simulations of the experiment. The composite statistic for the project after 17 years of data accumulation, graphically presented in this figure, shows a seven sigma departure from expectation indicating a probability on the order of one in a trillion that the correlation of our data with global events is merely a chance fluctuation. The data also shows patterns in measures other than the pre-planned formal statistics, which looks at network variance. The measure can be represented as a non-zero pairwise correlation of the geographically separated RNG devices. That is, the RNGs begin to act like each other synchronously, even though they are fundamentally independent by design and are separated by great distances. A second kind of correlation structure has been tentatively identified and deserves further examination. In addition, there are clear indications of non-random spatial and temporal structure. The pairwise correlation, looking at simultaneous changes in all possible pair combinations of devices, is greater for large events where more people are emotionally engaged than small events. The effect strength declines with increased separation in a subset of small events that are relatively localized. For example, the World Series of Baseball is of interest mainly in the U.S. For truly global events, the pairwise correlations do not depend on distance. In a recent analysis, we have found the effects are stronger when people are awake. Intriguingly, the data during an event show a pattern that looks like the classic evoked response to sensory stimuli in brainwaves, suggesting that a global consciousness may have human-like qualities that evoked responses to a stimulus. While these findings can't be taken as proof of global consciousness, the evidence clearly suggests that focused emotional energy and attention can interact with and affect the physical world. For example, variations of the effect appear to be linked to emotional categories. Given the basic premise of interconnectedness, it is no surprise to observe that events that embody or evoke love and compassion show a greater effect on the global network than any other emotion we examine. High levels of compassion correspond to stronger effects. In a related analysis, we have found that a subset of events, like Earth Day, web-organized global meditations, and major demonstrations for peace that promote global harmony show a strong positive effect. On average, the deviations from randomness during a single event are small, but in the aggregate, they are clear, and we have determined that they are not attributable to mundane explanations such as electromagnetic radiation, excessive strain on the power grid, mobile phone use, and etc. We don't know how to explain the mechanism by which events of importance to humans affect the output of the GCP devices, but the correlations are clearly meaningful. They suggest something akin to the image held in almost all cultures of a unity or oneness based on a deep interconnection that is fundamental to life. Our efforts to understand these complex and interesting findings may contribute insight into the role of consciousness as a creative force in the physical world as predicted by quantum physics. The scientific questions raised and results that have been found by the GCP are intriguing and important in the study of global interconnectivity. However, we believe that to go further in the scientific exploration of the effects of the global consciousness on the physical world and the global interconnectivity of all living systems, it is now time to re-envision and expand the project. Technologies have dramatically advanced in the past 20 years, and useful new analysis tools have become available. Dr. Roger Nelson has done extraordinary work 
by building on years of research at the Princeton Peer Lab to envision, create, and maintain the GCP over the past two decades. He is now retired and hoping to hand off the project to a research group that will have the same passion and vision he has. He feels that the HeartMath Research Center is the ideal new home base for the project and the creation of what we are calling GCP 2.0. In collaboration, we are in the process of developing a substantially more comprehensive and robust version two. This will be a citizen scientist based endeavor that incorporates a new generation of standalone devices. The original system required partners to have a continuously running computer and broadband to participate. That will allow us to greatly expand the number of sites around the world. It will collect parallel synchronous data using a different approach that should increase the sensitivity of the network to detect changes in the global field. In addition, the HeartMath Institute as a part of the Global Coherence Initiative, GCI, which is also focused on the study of global connectivity and consciousness, maintains a global network of ultra-sensitive magnetometers that monitor the resonant frequencies of the Earth's magnetic fields. The results of some of the GCI studies indicate a profound connection between the Earth's magnetic fields and humanity. GCI has also created a new mobile app, the Global Coherence app, that allows simultaneous real-time assessment of heart rate variability, HRV, for people located anywhere in the world. In other words, we now have a means to measure group coherence at a physiological level and track the number of locations of participants wherever they are located. For example, one of our hypotheses is that a smaller but highly heart coherent group will produce greater effects on the global field than a larger non-coherent group. The Institute is also in the last stages of rolling out a global citizen scientist based project, which will monitor the electrical potential of trees around the globe. The Global Tree Potential Monitoring Network was in many ways inspired by the GCP and will provide another potential probe in assessing the changes in the global field environment in response to collective generated emotions. Our vision is to combine all these globally focused networks of rich data sources to enable a new generation of research into the effects of global consciousness and interconnectivity. For example, we will be able to conduct studies where we have physiological monitoring of large numbers of people feeding the planetary field, sharing coherent intentions and emotions while simultaneously monitoring potential effects in physical devices, RNGs, living systems, trees, and the Earth's magnetic field environment. Given adequate resources, the database structures supporting these studies will also include social metrics that can provide independent measures of human interests and emotional activity. The development and implementation of GCP 2.0 will require an initial R&D phase to design and test new standalone RNGs, data transfer protocols, database, and website. The R&D phase is expected to take between six to nine months to complete. The implementation phase will involve the distribution of devices to project participants and testing of the data collection networks and new analysis approaches we are envisioning. The devices will be provided to citizen scientist partners at the cost of manufacturing the RNG devices. Once the new network is established, the project will require ongoing identification of global events and analysis, as well as the design of studies that will ask new questions related to global interconnectivity and the power of collective consciousness to affect the physical world. This will require funding for a dedicated scientist whose sole focus is on the project.